hope you're all doing good in this video let's deal with the following topics starting with gingival enlargement in case of leukemia so which cells are present at the histologic level so if you have a literature given in Schaefer's histologic study of this type of gingival enlargement shows that gingival tissues are packed with immature leukocytes the specific type depending on the nature of leukemia and also review the additional literature and see if it's helpful in answering your question now moving on to the next topic cytoplasmic granules granular amyloblastoma so if you review literature given in Schaefer's ultrastructural studies have revealed that these cytoplasmic granules represent lysosomal aggregates with no recognizable cellular components right moving on to the next topic uh, there seems to be a question on parasympathetic stimulation so you can just review some literature pertaining to the differences between sympathetic and parasympathetic nervous system and i hope this information is helpful in answering your question now moving on to the next question management of lower anterior crowding so depending upon the severity of crowding we have different management strategies as you can see primary and secondary crowding and primary crowding depending upon the discrepancy management of slight discrepancy up to 4 mm management of moderate discrepancy uh, 4 to 7 mm and management of severe discrepancy more than 7 mm so in which case we go for serial extraction as well as 2 into 4 fixed appliances as you can see in the image right hope this information helps you in answering the question now moving on to the next topic phrenectomy is it done before or after canine eruption so let's review some literature pertaining to the same so as you can see a strong pull on the upper lip will elicit blanching of tissue lingual to upper incisors which indicates that the frenum could be caused for midline diastema and as you know there are several causes for midline diastema so only then phrenectomy should be considered because there are certainly more factors causing maxillary incisor diastemas than the labial frenum before stepping in with surgery however one should be sure that the diastema is not transient ugly duckling stage of development as canines and lateral incisors maneuver for error space in the alert process if there is any doubt one must wait until the permanent canines have fully erupted before incising the frenum right I hope it's clear now let's move on to the next question anterior crossbite treatment so there are different methods to correct anterior crossbite including tongue blade therapy occlusal equilibration inclined planes expansion appliances with screws fixed appliances as well as cantilever springs right moving on to the next topic uh, Hayton Williams forceps is one of the image based question which was asked in your entrance so if you review literature and also if you observe this image Hayton Williams forceps it's a disimpaction forceps which can be be used to reduce fractured maxilla as shown in the image right now moving on to the next topic iron chelating agents which of them is given intravenous let's review some iron chelating agents and their mode of administration or route of administration so if you observe Deferoxidox, deferiprone and deferoxamine of which deferoxamine is given either subcutaneous or through intravenous route right moving on to the next topic antibiotic prophylaxis which we discussed previously as well so if you review some literature it's usually given 30 to 60 minutes before procedure and there are dose variations in case of adults and children and also we had different patient groups as evident in this table right moving on to the final topic intraorbital incision drawbacks so let's review some literature pertaining to the same so in order to expose the lower orbital rim and orbital floor transcutaneous incisions such as subciliary subtarsal and intraorbital or transconjunctival incisions with lateral canthotomy have been in practice complications of the treatment of orbit fractures include scarring ectropion epiphora impaired lymphatic drainage and scleral inflammation so ectropion is outward turning of eyelid margin and also if you review uh, some additional literature given in another article incisions to approach infraorbital rim and orbital floor include transconjunctival infraorbital supratarsal fold incision and as mentioned here disadvantages include possible development of ectropion entropion and persistent edema of lower eyelid right so see if this information is helpful in answering your question and also let me know if you have any additional keywords or if any any additional information do post it in the form of comments we'll review and update additional information in the description part of the video right so these are some of the topics which i wanted to highlight in this video so i hope it's clear wish you all the best love you all